you know, a lot of times we think of, of Zwingli and, and Luther, but I wanted to talk about Bucer some too. And Bucer was kind of the leading reformer from Strasbourg. Strasbourg right now is in France, but it's right along the Rhine and kind of that part of the Rhine switches between Germany and France. And so it was in Germany and it was the southwestern part of, of Germany when, when Bucer was there. And so Bucer also, basically he, he uh, I think he meets with Luther in 1518, right? So a year after, after Wittenberg. And he basically adopts reform doctrine. At first, he's the second leading reformer in Germany. He is having a huge impact. When Calvin gets thrown out of Geneva, he goes to Strasbourg because that's where Bucer is. But Bucer has problems too. Bucer, Bucer wants to see unity so much that he's willing to sacrifice things for unity. And it was good when he brought, brought Zwingli and Luther together to try to, to get them to agree on the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. But later he goes on and, and he, at that point in time, he, he basically is the one that has the Calvin view of the Lord's Supper, which is a spiritual presence, not the physical presence and not a memorial, but the spiritual presence. And that's pretty much where the Reformation ends up is that everybody believes that there's a spiritual presence, that Christ communes with his church through the Lord's Supper, but he's not physically present. But that's the next generation that that happens in. So he writes what ends up being called the Tetrapolitan Confession. And the Tetrapolitan Confession is, the, it's named that because of the four cities right around Strasbourg that all adopt that confession. It's the same as the Augsburg Confession, except for the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. It says that there is no physical presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper. So all these churches are trying to state exactly what they believe, which is a good thing. It's a good thing to be saying what they believe. But as you move forward in time, Bucer starts to change, and he starts to, to be more interested in unity than he is in truth. And that tends to have real, real problems. And again, Charles V is still around after the Augsburg Augsburg Confession is written in Augsburg where he's trying to unify. And he makes another attempt to unify, I think, in 1548. In that attempt to unify, basically the king now says, you need to accept the Augsburg interim or I will persecute. Now he's consolidated his power and he's saying, so I will persecute Protestants in the Holy Roman Empire, you know, basically Germany. And so this was an, a total return to Roman Catholicism, but many of the acts of worship that, that the reformers were turning from, you know, God says he cares how we worship him. And Charles V said, it doesn't matter. Let's just have unity. Charles V says, I want somebody really well known to push this idea. And so he tells Bucer, you have to sign it. And Bucer says, I won't sign it. And I think Charles V throws him in jail for two days and he signs it. And so then he goes back to, to Strasbourg. And so they exile this man who 20 years before was the second greatest reformer in all of Germany. He ends up going to, to England and dying in England. But as we look at these reformers, they're fallen men. They have sins, they have problems. Some of them, you can't even be sure if they're saved. He, he heads pretty far back towards accepting Roman Catholic doctrine because he's more concerned about unity. And, and it's easy to look back at these men and treat them kind of like the knights, right? Where the knights won all the glory, but all these men, God doesn't give them the glory. All these men have problems and difficulties. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.